marching down here. Just gonna kayak a little bit. I'm here because this is an absolute perfect place to look at energy, all different types in action. All right, so I'm gonna get some interviews with people, see what they think about the energy here at the facility. Let's go. Energy, wow. <laughs> it's hard to explain, there's just so much of it out here. One of the most energetic places I've ever been in, ever. With the energy that was through the roof. <laughs> Kids? Yeah. Oh, kids are right here? Anyone yeah. who gets, comes down here is fired up about this place. There is a lot of energy flowing through these channels. Well, There's a lot of energy used in the facility. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so clearly, in the English language, there are many meanings for the word. Let's review quickly what it means to a scientist. Basically, energy is the ability to do work, and it comes in many forms. You've probably heard of the difference between kinetic or moving energy and potential or stored energy. Well, that's the basic way to divide energy, but it's not always that simple. You have electrical energy, moving kinetic energy, heat energy, chemical energy stored in molecular bonds, and light energy, just to name some of the major ones. So what different types of energy can we see here at this facility? So right here, we're seeing potential energy being converted to moving energy as this water pushes downhill. The water's potential energy came from the pumps, which got their energy from the electrical energy in the power lines, which got their energy from the coal-burning power plant down the road. The power plant alone has all sorts of energy conversion steps needed to get the electrical energy flowing out. And of course, the coal's energy is chemical stored millions of years ago via photosynthesis from the sun's energy. So there you have the flow of energy, ultimately from the sun to this flowing water. We can represent all that through this energy chart. Look at the conversions from the sun to plants, millions of years to coal, to all the energy steps in the coal plant, to the electrical lines, and then to the pumps, and then to the water. During every conversion, you lose a bit of energy, mostly as heat. You also have a few byproducts here that aren't all that desirable. What if we could eliminate some of these steps and use the energy from the sun directly? Well, solar panel can convert solar energy to electrical energy and essentially eliminate all of these steps. But to really learn about this, I'm heading to the experts. Okay, I'm a little bit lost. I'm gonna meet the scientists who are doing cutting edge research. It's all right, energy. Let's go. Dude, how have you been? Great. So I met with Dr. Dick Coe, and he works with a team of chemists in the basement of one of the buildings on campus. So I am a chemist working with lasers to study new materials that we're developing to capture energy from the sun. Our first step was to head to the chemistry lab. We met up with Ricky DeMarco, who is studying dye-sensitized solar cells. Understanding the science behind it is key to figuring out how to um, have widespread use of the sun. She explains that these dye-sensitized solar cells would potentially be a cheaper option than the current silicon panels, and that means more people could use them. Here's how it works. First, you take a piece of conducting glass and spread a special white paste of titanium dioxide on it. Titanium dioxide being in white paint, it's in your toothpaste, it's on your donuts. bread, it's powdered donuts. It's so benign. The most expensive part is the conductive glass and the special glass we use. Then this is put into a bottle of dye. And then you can use anything that has a deep color to it, so like blueberry jam, strawberry jam. And while you can use blueberry jam, research does go into finding just the right dye for maximum efficiency. Because what happens is that the dye molecules attach to the titanium dioxide particles on the cell. As light hits these dye molecules, it gives enough energy to allow an electron to break free. This electron moves to the white titanium dioxide particles and then to the conducting glass. In many ways, this is just like the pumps at the Whitewater Center. They're giving the water potential energy, just like the sun now is creating the electrical potential here. The electrons essentially want to flow downhill, just like the water. So when you make a closed circuit with the solar cell, this is exactly what happens. So our solar cell is done. But just to prove that it can produce electricity, we put it in front of this light source and watched it power a small fan. From here, Dick and I went out to see the current solar panel applications. Here is one way to capture light energy and convert it directly to electrical energy 
and using it to power the building. On top of the engineering building, we saw an array of silicon solar panels. Now Dick hopes that their current research will help create cheaper alternatives so that every building on campus could use solar energy. And then, out in the parking lot, we met up with the Northwestern Solar Racing Team. Well, obviously these are the solar shells. Um, they're placed all across the top of the car to maximize the face with the sun. The best way to go about it is about 25 to 30 miles per hour. And this car can go up to like 50, maybe 60 is before it starts to kind of not really be a good idea anymore. So that seems really fast, but turns out it doesn't pull in as much energy as you might think. Even all these solar cells were getting about enough power to power a hairdryer or a toaster. So these engineering students are taking the current solar technology and putting it to use. And I was curious what the chemist had to say about this. So current technology is great, but not good enough. We want to be able to produce cheap and reliable energy that we can scale up and distribute worldwide. It's an investment to actually develop solar energy for the future. I'm saving the world. And people have always said they want their nuclear reactor 95 million miles away. And that's what the sun is. There is a lot of areas that only have oil. So these places are actually very rich with their resources. And sunlight is something that's everywhere. So it's really neutral that everyone has access to sunlight. Every hour, the sun puts enough energy on the Earth to power the entire planet for a year. What I think the overarching goal of solar energy would be is to take everything the sun's giving us from visible wavelength to heat and figure out how we can utilize that best. The amount of energy is massive, it's abundant, and we just need to capture a small fraction of that and use it to power our civilization. So there you have it. While solar energy is but one of the types of energy on the planet, it's abundant, renewable, and found everywhere on the planet. Whether you're kayaking down a raging river or sitting in a chemistry lab, energy is constantly changing forms from one type to another. As we try to solve our energy needs, we just need to think about shortening the steps and making each conversion as efficient as possible. And as always, never stop exploring your world.